Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. In a little bit of interesting seasonal dialogue from Imaru, we suddenly saw a massive admission that has huge bearings on not just the current state of the world of Destiny, but also our own relationship with our ghosts and even the Traveler. Take a listen to this. Your ghost said the Traveler's been quiet lately. That's not exactly true. I think he's sparing you the details. The witness is doing something terrible to it. I can sense it in my light. Listen, imagine your god spoke to you, and all it did was scream for help. Yeah, it's kind of like that. From that one little bit of lore that doesn't seem like a lot, we can actually unpack an incredibly large amount of lore about our ghosts, their relationship with the Traveler, and potentially Imaru's intentions. That is the focus of today's video, the implications of what Imaru just told us of the Witness's time lurking within the pale heart of the Traveler. So, this line is particularly important for a few reasons. First of all, it tells us that ghosts have the ability to hear the Traveler and understand what it is saying, what it's feeling, they have some kind of innate connection, which is something that we've always sort of been able to speculate about and we've kind of known with a lowercase k, but not really known with a capital K, if that makes sense. We've never really been given this blanket open confirmation of, yeah, the ghosts all know how the Traveler is doing. So that's something quite remarkable. Secondly, it tells us that the Traveler is in pain due to the actions of the Witness, at least if we're to believe Imaru. Why do I place doubt on such an obvious statement? Well, because it's Imaru telling it to us, and this leads into the third thing we learn from this statement, supposedly, which is that it tells us that our ghosts aren't really giving us the full picture, and they've potentially known more about what's happening than they've let on. We're going to break down each of these three assertions throughout this video. First, though, I really do want to address that idea of trust. I want to address the idea that our ghosts aren't telling us everything, and I want to make a little examination of what's being said here. I think we can't necessarily trust Imaru when he says our ghosts aren't telling us the whole picture. That's a very bold claim, and I think it's kind of a half-truth, really. And I think there are two reasons why. Firstly, Imaru has every reason to make our ghosts' potential ignorance a wedge that will drive something between us and them. Given that he is trying to disrupt our morale, given that he is our enemy, and I mean, wouldn't you if you were in his shoes? You've got a moment where you can potentially split the ranks of the Guardians and make things a little bit easier for the Lucent Brood. Wouldn't you take that opportunity? I think that most of us would if we were in Imaru's position. And then there's this second bit of audio, which I think is really important because it puts his statement in a different context and reveals some inconsistencies with what he's telling us. It makes us seem a little bit more like he's trying to drive this wedge between us and it makes it seem as though our ghosts aren't really to blame. Take a listen. You might have heard some ghosts saying they can't feel the Traveler after what the Witness did to it. Now, don't get your hopes up. I can still sense it. But something's changed. Look, I know the Hive. I know death when I feel it, and this doesn't feel like death. This is more like... desperation. Tension. Terror. See? I told you not to get your hopes up. So in this clip, while Stimaru says that other ghosts can't sense it, he says he can. In this instance, what he is saying about how the Traveler feels is much less important than the fact that he says he can feel it in the first place whilst some other ghosts can't. For those reasons, I think this is much more of a situation where Imaru is gloating and is trying to drive that wedge between us, and it leads to a lot more fascinating questions. First of all, could all ghosts feel the Traveler normally before this moment when the Witness walked inside the Pale Heart? Secondly, is there something that's stopping some ghosts from sensing the Traveler but not Imaru? Maybe Imaru is a special ghost who can sense something that's past the Witness's influence and its shroud for some reason. Or is it the case that Imaru is just simply telling us what seems like a very likely piece of information, but is actually just a lie so that he can keep our attention on the process needed to defeat the Witness and by proxy resurrect Savathun? 
I think the point I'm trying to make here is that whilst Imaru is most definitely someone we need to work with for the moment, I wouldn't trust him at all. This idea that our ghosts are trying to deliberately lie to us seems like a very easy lie to untangle, especially considering that, well, you know, they've always been able to feel the Traveler's presence and understand what's going on, but the Traveler has never really given a communication of its feelings in such a direct and indiscreet manner. There's never been something that is so simply obvious. The one thing that I do think that Imaru isn't necessarily lying about, even if he doesn't know it to be true, is that the Traveler is probably in terror, desperation, or even just in constant pain. None of these are good things. But it does lead us to the next important part of our question, which is realistically, how much of a connection to the Traveler have our ghosts ever really had? And, I mean, that's a little bit of an important question for the context of it all. Because, again, the Traveler has always been there in a vague and allegorical sense. To give you what I think is a really great example of that, take a look back into D2 Vanilla's campaign, in the moment when we reclaim the light. We have our ghost approaching the shard of the Traveler that we've been summoned to, and it says the following. This is why we were led here. I haven't felt this close to the Traveler's light since... Do you feel it? At this moment, we're then imbued with the light, and the ghost swiftly follows up with, Do you feel it? The light is back. We're back. Stuff like this has sort of always happened. The ghost has always had some kind of connection to the Traveler, but it's never been stated that it's explicitly this thing of it can feel the Traveler's emotions in this kind of precise way. Ghosts have always been able to sense its presence, and that's the thing of sitting there and looking back to the end of Lightfall when the ghosts all say that the Traveler feels dead, but not truly dead. It's interesting. It's also something that isn't helped by the fact that the relationship in the early days of Destiny's canon between the Light and the Traveler wasn't that well understood, and realistically, a lot of the time, the Light and the Traveler and the Gardener and all these other terms were used very interchangeably. To an extent that you could sit there and basically say, hey, I serve the light. And you could, in that one statement, bind up the idea that you served the Guardian Orders, the Last City, your ghost, the Traveler, and the light, all in one statement. This is more of a reflection of where we stand in Destiny now. Everything is a whole lot more nuanced. But then again, let's return to this idea of communication from the Traveler, because you know what? Ghosts aren't the only ones who've received communications, and perhaps it's not too surprising to know that they can at least hear the Traveler, or have some idea of a level of detail of what its current state is. And the reason I say that is because there are others who have heard it. Crow, Ikora Ray, the Speaker, I know, hold your horses on this one, and us. Alongside Crow and Ikora, Crow in the Season of the Hunt, and Ikora at the release of Forsaken, We've received dreams in the form of visions from the Traveler. Normally, these are often accompanied by moments where you will actually see the Traveler imbuing someone with either light or purpose, as was the case for Crow. Also, I mean, Crow got a nice, really neat ship and a reformed Hawk Moon and a whole bunch of other stuff, but, you know, that's beside the point. It's in moments like the Forsaken mission that we have most personally benefited from this, and we actually saw visions that led us to Io in the Lost Oasis. This is a place where light and darkness have commonly danced, and it's right by the Cradle, the place where the Traveler last touched before the collapse occurred. In this place, we would actually see the Traveler's voice speaking to us through the words of others. People such as the Speaker, Lord Saladin, and even Toland the Shattered were used as references for the Traveler's words. Its actual words were theirs, and its voice was the one that seemed to speak. Whilst it's really tempting to say that this is a nice direct line of communications, it really isn't, because again, I don't think there's a single line in this mission that I've looked through that can't be attributed as a quote from someone else in the lore. And that's kind of frustrating, because again, it blurs that line of sitting there and saying that we're able to directly understand the Traveler. Seemingly direct as that communication is, in the process of the mission, Ikora also states that the Traveler seemingly needed to awaken and heal before it could reach out to us so explicitly. It is worth noting, though, that in the times before this, namely in Destiny 1, especially in the D1 vanilla campaign, there are people who seem to have a direct idea of how the Traveler is doing, at least in terms of its general strength. 
And those people include not only our ghosts, but also the speaker. Now, I know that mentioning the speaker in any sense is going to spark a lot of potentially hot debate in the comments section, but hear me out. There is law that seems to at least indicate this fact. Now, I say this partly because of the fact that whilst this book is from his perspective, it's not purely from his perspective. There is a law book from way back in the Season of Dawn, which I haven't actually covered in great detail. The entire law book is all about the speakers. Yes, plural. And I need to cover it at some point because, yeah, it's kind of important. It tells us a lot. The book is called Constellations, and it seems to at various points have communications that are listed as directly from the Traveler, but also it speaks of the perspective of several speakers. And yes, here's the short version of the lore on that. There were speakers in the Golden Age, not just one, but many of them. It seems as though they could all hear the Traveler somewhat clearly, and it communicated to them in a kind of trance-like state, almost like narcolepsy, that would leave them motionless and in tune merely with its voice as they did so. This was all something that occurred in the Golden Age, and when the Golden Age passed and the collapse occurred, it seemed like only one speaker remained. And that one speaker is the one that we know of now. The one that died at the beginning of Destiny 2, or rather the end of Destiny 2's vanilla campaign. When the speaker was around in the days of the City Age and just after the collapse, originally he wasn't able to easily hear the Traveler's voice. It took his mask being created for him to hear its voice again. And that speaks to some very interesting ideas as to what it takes to communicate with the Traveler generally. I need to go back and reread this entire law book as it stands, because ultimately, who knows, maybe that's something that comes into play when it comes to Final Shape, and entering the pale heart of the Traveler, communicating or at least hearing it more openly. I think if there's any time for us to explore that avenue, it should be now. Then again, who knows where the narrative will go. With all of that being said, this doesn't account for the idea that our ghosts were always able to hear the Traveler in some degree of detail, and it doesn't change the fact that I think this is confirmation in a way of how much detail the ghosts might get in their communications to the Traveler. Do you remember that infamous line the speaker says at the end of the Red War campaign? I said I spoke for the Traveler, I didn't say it spoke to me. This is perhaps confirmation that the Traveler maybe isn't speaking directly to any one person. Maybe it's speaking to a whole bunch of people at once. Maybe it's just voicing what it has to say and how it is and there are only a few that can pick up on it at any one time. All of that being said, I do believe that regardless of where the whole point of communication stands, there is one thing that we have learned since both the showcase and since this clip was released, and that's that the Traveler is in an immense amount of distress. We know since the showcase that the Witness has been working within the pale heart of the Traveler to create the final shape. With both the powers of light and darkness, it will be able to essentially create whatever it desires, what it believes to be a universe without chaos and without unnecessary suffering. This doesn't sound bad at first, of course, but the price is our entire universe. It must be remade in order for the final shape to occur. Whatever it's doing to craft this, it is creating a monolith at the center of the Traveler's Pale Heart, and that cannot be good. I guess, to take a twist on what Imaru is saying, if we are to believe that our ghosts have some line of communication to the Traveler, if we are to believe that at least Imaru can hear what it's saying, what does it say to us that the only thing that Imaru can make out seems to be fear, terror, desperation, and screams? As a further point to really drive home that terror, what does it take to strike fear into a god? What does it take to make it scream? This in itself is a topic that we'll get to explore a little bit further in a few other videos this season, and that's predominantly because of something which is finally coming back into some immediate relevance, and that's the Veil containment entries. The latest one that we've received is very detailed. It goes into an expansive amount of explanation thanks to Osiris and Nimbus uncovering more data, and this is going to be the topic of our next video. There is a lot of light to be shed on the state of things as we go into the final shape and face off against the Witness at last. But that's all from me for now. Go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Predominantly, I want to focus on this major idea. 
can our ghosts actually hear the Traveler communicating to us? Can they hear it? Have they always been able to? What's the degree of detail? See if you can remember anything in the lore that points towards this. Because as it stands, there are a few points at which I believe it's explicitly mentioned and it's fascinating, but this is an area of research that I think is definitely worth looking into. It's not so much about the whether they can or can't, it's more about the degree of depth. So see if you can find any details about that, or if you remember something, go ahead and point it out. I'll be interested to read down below. All that being said, if you want more Destiny content, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.